Hey guys, Clade here. Welcome to my patch 8.2.5 Fury Warrior Guide. We'll go everything you need to know in order to get those rank 1 parses. First, your talent, your first row of talents, War Machine, Endless Rage, and Fresh Meat. Endless Rage is basically going to be the best talent for mostly all situations in BFA. And actually throughout the course of the expansion from the beginning up to now, this talent has actually gotten slightly stronger because of the new Cold Steel Hot Blood trait and how we're basically hitting more Bloodthirst than we used to from the beginning of the expansion. So that means you're going to get more Rage, right? That means you're going to get more Enrages. And also because of a gear, because we have basically more haste and more secondary stats to work with, you're going to be rampaging more, which means you're going to be getting Enraged even more. The reason why War Machine doesn't work as well is that you basically need too many enemies to be constantly dying for War Machine to provide as much value as NS Rage does, even in AoE settings. And Fresh Meat is kind of there, like you can maybe use for PvP settings, but eh, it's kind of meh. Second row of talents, Double Time, Impending Victory, and Stormbolt. Double Time is basically going to be your go-to for whenever you can't CC anything with Stormbolt, right? If there's Mythic Plus or PvP, you can definitely take Stormbolt, but if not, just get the two charges. Third row of talents, Inner Rage, Sudden Death, and Fury Slash. This row is kind of like the first row where it's like really contested for DPS, right? For single target, it's really the choice between Sudden Death and Fury Slash. For PvP or AoE oriented fights, it's gonna be sudden death is gonna take the win. Even for single target, you can take sudden death if you somehow really don't like playing with Fury Slash. But right now, Fury Slash does edge out slightly higher on single target DPS. Next row of talents, you have Furious Charge, Bounding Strike, and War Paint. Right now, mostly for raiding, as long as you don't need the shorter cooldown for Bounding Stride, you just take War Paint. Basically, for every type of content, if you don't need Bounding Stride because there isn't a constant mechanic that comes up like every 30 seconds where you need it, then you just take War Paint instead, and that will serve you just fine. Next row, we have Carnage, Massacre, and Frothing Berserker. Literally, just always take Carnage. Don't even think about the other two. Level 90 talents, Meat Cleaver, Dragon Roar, and Blaze Swarm. This one is kind of a choice between Dragon Roar and Blaze Swarm. Dragon Roar, of course, is the better single target talent. But as far as for AoE is concerned, Blaze Swarm can work better if you stack off your cooldowns with it, right? You can burst harder. If it's like a huge AoE burst of over five targets, technically Blaze Swarm will give you the edge here. And of course, it lets you immune stuff. So if there's any CC abilities in Mythic Plus or PvP, you can always immune it with Blaze Swarm. Next row of talents, you have Reckless Abandon, Anger Management, and Siege Breaker. This one is actually closer than you might think than some of the other talents, but Siegebreaker is by far the best. But if you somehow really don't like playing Siegebreaker, you can go Anger Management. And there's even cases where you can go Reckless Abandon, but in reality, Siegebreaker is going to be the best. Especially now what the essence is, which basically lines up like your cooldowns very well in like that 30 second increment, Siegebreaker does do very well. So basically the talents that you see on your screen right now are going to be your best single target talent setup. Right, this is if I'm doing a single target fight and I don't need any movement, right? I just take this. If I'm doing either a PvP or Mythic Plus, then I'll change this to Storm Ball, right? Change it to Sudden Death, and then I'll change this to Blaze Storm. And then if I'm doing situations where if we go back to single target for here and we don't want to try hard with Fear Slash, then you can always go Sudden Death. It does make the rotation slightly easier because there's one less thing you keep in track of, right? You don't have to make sure that this buff is constantly kept on. But regardless, that should serve you well for all the talents. And then the new thing, of course, right, that wasn't in our original 8.0 guide is now the introduction of these essences, right? So all these things that you get, first off, Condensed Life Force, this is your best in slot, single target essence. It's going to do the most amount of burst damage for single target, right? Three minute cooldown, you pop it. And basically, if the entire time that the guy is up, because every time that he hits a target, they're going to have that uh, debuff on them where they take 5% more damage, right? And of course, whenever you proc the miner they're also going to be taking five percent more damage for six seconds right and on top of that when he pops up he gives you a two percent haste stacking buff that stacks up to five times so you get ten percent haste you have five percent increased damage the entire time he's up lines up pretty well with their cooldowns right three minute cooldown just means you get to use this every other recklessness next we have essence of the focusing iris i think this Essence, as far as the major power is concerned, is better when you're less geared. So if you're kind of newer warrior starting off or if you're not as geared as everybody else, it's okay to use as a major because you're more reliant on just this ability doing all the damage. And then as far as for the minor power, it's pretty good because it gives you haste. And we'll go over the best setups for all situations in a second, but it's a pretty good minor to have, especially if you don't have to switch targets. Purification protocol. For this one, the active summons the beam, it kind of sucks. Nobody really uses the active, which is why it's going to get buffed in patch 8.3. So we can wait for that. The minor power, the reason why it is good, because it does 50% additional damage against aberrations. On top of that, this is the only minor proc that actually does AOE damage. 
right? None of the other miners here, when it procs, can do AOE damage. Now, obviously, if they buff your stats, you can count that as AOE damage because it buffs your abilities, but this is the only ability where it deals damage in AOE fashion when it procs. So I definitely take this for like Mythic Plus or any fights with aberrations. Blooded Enemy, this is the best major power for AOE setups for AOE burst because uh, you get that huge crit hit chance and critical hit damage, which is really big because we're stacking crit anyways, right? So this is going to be really good for that. The minor power, eh, it's okay. Some people like it, some people don't. I wouldn't say it's one of the better ones, but you can take it if it somehow matches your stats. Conflict and Strife, you don't take this for the major power. The major power sucks in basically all situations unless you're going against like Rogue Mage or something and you just don't want to die in a stun. The minor power is... Pretty good actually, because it gives you versatility, which gives you a double benefit of DPS and survivability. So for characters who are lacking in versatility, where the damage component of this is actually good for you, this is a great trait to have because if it does the same damage as every other miner, you might as well take it because it gives you more survivability on top of that, right? Next, you have Memory Lucid Dreams. This could have been good, but it doesn't really work that well for Fury. If you use the major power, you basically end up getting too much rage. And then the miner isn't that good, so eh, it's whatever. It, it was better when you're less geared, but once you get geared, it's whatever. Crucible of Flame. This one, major power, you basically don't use the fear word because the reason when you use this as an ability, it wastes the global cooldown and you don't gain any rage during that, right? So you don't really want to do that. And then as far as so the minor power is concerned, it actually is one of the best single target minor power. So generally you don't use it as a major, but you do use it as a minor. World Vein Resonance, you wouldn't use this as the major because there's better ones, but you could use it as a minor if somehow everybody's using it. But I would still personally stay away from it. It's not one of the better ones. And Bound Force, this thing got nerfed like crazy from when it was on the PTR. Don't use it. It sucks now. Vision Perfection, sucks for Fury. Don't use it. Ripple in Space, uh, I mean, it's a pretty meme one. You can see that I still only have the rank one, so that tells you how bad it is. But as far as for complete setups, right, for single target, you're going to go Condensed Life Force as the major. And then you're gonna go Crucible Flame. And then the third one, you kind of have a choice. You basically can choose between Essence of the Focusing Iris, if Haste is more valuable for your current character, or you can go Conflict and Strife if your current character already has a lot of haste from your other pieces of gear, and then you need some versatility, right? So that's kind of the ones that you will switch. As far as for AoE is concerned, you now wanna do Blood of the Enemy as your major, and then you wanna replace your Crucible Flame with a Purification Protocol. And then the same thing here for the third one, Conflict and Strife and Essence of the Focusing Iris. You can switch that based on whichever stat is more valuable to you. Though I would generally stick with Conflict and Strife because there is no penalty for switching targets with Conflict and Strife. But for Essence of the Focusing Iris, when you switch targets, you lose all of your stacks. Now, of course, if you have rank three of this or higher, you instantly generate three stacks out of the 10 stacks. So you're not completely going 10 and zero. There is another way to actually keep the 10 stacks. Basically, if you're able to continue hitting your initial primary target with your whirlwind cleaved attacks, that can actually keep the stacks going. So let's say I'm hitting this first target and I want to switch to the target. If I whirlwind and I get the whirlwind cleave and they were close enough and I hit in a bluffers and it hits both targets, that would actually transfer my main target without losing the stacks. So it is possible to use this essence and basically still get 10 stacks even when she's target. It just takes a little bit more effort to do. So that's it for essences, two very easy setups. And of course, once we get to 8.3, we'll talk about those because there'll be new essences coming with 8.3. Next, let's go over the Azurite essences, right? These are the Azurite armor you have in your helmet, shoulder, and chest slots. The best ones to stack at least, is gonna be Cold Steel Hot Blood. So if you can get Cold Steel Hot Blood on all three pieces, great. Basically, for gaining more value, each additional trait just adds more, right? Whereas for something like Embryo Ferocity, you really just need one. Having two or three doesn't really help you that much because you just want that chance to proc recklessness, right? So like that extra rampage damage on Embryo Ferocity doesn't really mean much. And of course, the third ring of talents, right? Overwhelming power, which stands for OP. This is the best in slot essence in this ring, right? So the first two rings share a pool of traits. The third ring shares its own pool of traits, but Overwhelming power is so much better than every other trait in this row that sometimes trying to get three overwhelming power, so one overwhelming power in each piece of gear can actually push a gear to have slightly worse traits up front, but still be better. But actually for Fury Warriors right now, we can actually get the best in slot traits, right? Which is basically having three Cold Steel Hot Blood, three overwhelming power, 
one unbridled ferocity, right? That's like the minimum for the best in slot gear. Now, what does that leave you? That leaves you with two essences that you can kind of play around with, right? If you can get a simming rage, great, because now you're getting more rage for a rampage. And this is the same thing as a Bright of Ferocity. You just want one simming rage. And then as far as for the next one, you can get a loyal to the end, which comes from a raid, which is better in a raid setting than anywhere else, right? In a Mythic Plus or PvP, it's not as great. Because for loyalty to the end, you get the full value when there's four other people with it. So it's much easier to do in a race setting because there's 20 people in a mythic raid or potentially more if you're doing normal heroic. And then if you can't get this, the shoulders from Mythic Plus are also pretty good. That's probably even harder to get. That one has swirling sands. That one actually has a slightly higher DPS based depending on how many people die, right? Because loyalty to the end gets even better if people die. But basically those are the requirements, right? Three overwhelming power, three cold steel hot blood, one and Bridal Frosty, and if optional, and if it's just a bonus, right, you can get Simian Rage, you can get Loyal to the End, uh, you can get Swirling Sand, you can even get a Reckless Furry if you want, and then it doesn't really matter what else you want. You basically just Sim, and then you pick the best trait from there on. And then just to touch upon gear briefly, right, uh, of course, Benthic gear in all the slots with Socket is going to be best, right? The boots are crazy good, 3% critical hit damage, insane. Trinkets, the two Trinkets from the raid are going to be the best, Dribbling Ink Pod, Ash Range Razor Coral, uh, Gatiku Cut of Death is going to be really good. High level weapons with sockets are going to be really good. And then for your rings, probably want sockets. And then for your pants, you know, pants from the raid are fine. But if you can somehow get pants from Una from the previous raid, that's still very, very strong. Belt from Queen Ashara or Benthic Belt are very strong. So basically, for the rest of your gear, if you can get sockets on them, you want to get sockets on them. If you can get the highest eye level weapons you can, get the highest eye level weapons you can and then use Dripplin Ink Pod and Ash Rings from Rage of Coral. That basically sums up your gear. As far as where stats is concerned for your gear, you're gonna want crit and haste. That's gonna be the two best stats for your character. And of course, crit's value goes up depending on how much Cold Steel Hot Blood you have, right? So Cold Steel Hot Blood activates when your Bloodthirst critical strikes. So if you have one Cold Steel Hot Blood trait, you know, your crit is okay. Two, your crit becomes your best stat. If you have three Cold Steel Hot Blood, then Crit is by far your best slot, right? So that's kind of how that stat works out. Haste is generally always good for Fury, right? It's always at the top, and then it's only not at the top because of the value of Crit with Cold Steel Hot Blood. So that's also going to dictate your weapon enchant, right? So you're going to want a Deadly Navigation and a Quick Navigation. You can sim if a Force Multiplier is better than Quick Navigation, but for me, it's basically the same, so I just prefer Quick Navigation anyways. So I've just kept with these two enchants. And then as far as for your enchant and your sockets, it's just gonna be, you know, haste or crit, depending kind of your character when you submit what values are higher. Obviously you want the 60 plus crit or haste enchant, and then you want the 50 plus crit or haste gems, right? So that should help take care of your gear. Also, if you're in doubt, as long as you have Cold Steel Hot Blood, just going crit and all of your gems and enchants are probably gonna be fine. Next, let's go over the rotations and spell priority, right? So this is gonna be excluding like your recklessness and your siege breaker. Like, what do you do with all of your normal abilities, right? There's basically six of them. What order should you place them? On top of that, this is actually easier now than the first guy. I redid some sims and it's super easy now, right? All there is to it, step one, right? The highest priority. So remember, these are not necessarily you just press them in the order. These are every time you can press an ability, you go down a list and you just hit whatever is the highest, right? First off, Rampage, if you're currently not enraged or if you have 90 rage, or if you have recklessness running. So what does this mean? This means currently, if you're not enraged, you hit rampage, so that way you can get enraged you know, instantly because you're doing more damage during enrage, right? Second, that means if you currently have the enrage buff, right? If hitting the next rage generating ability isn't gonna rage cap you, then yeah, you just get generating more rage, right? And then you hit your rampage. That way you can maintain and keep your enrage uptime as high as possible, right? And the reasoning why you're hitting your rampage at those numbers instead of you know hitting your rampage at 100 rage is just so that way you don't waste any rage right you don't want to be at 100 rage hit a bloodthirst and auto attack and gain all this rage that you know nothing happens to it right because you're already capped right so that's why step one rampage if you're not enraged or if you're at 90 rage or if you're currently in recklessness next we have execute that's it you don't need any buffs if you have execute whether it's from a sudden death proc whether it's because the target is less than 20% HP, execute. It generates so much rage that you just want to use this as much as you can, right? Next, Bloodthirst. 
you hit it just when you get it. You don't have to worry about whether or not you're enraged or not. You don't need to worry about how many cold steel hot blood traits you have. You can have zero cold steel hot blood traits. You can still use it. Even at zero cold steel hot blood traits, it does either the same or slightly higher DPS than if you were to not use it. So just bloodthirst, very simple. Next is dragon roar or blaze swarm if you have that instead if you're in rage, right? You basically only hit this if you're in rage, or let's say there's like four ads and they're all about to die within that GCD, then sure, you can hit it, right? But generally for single target, you only use it when you're in rage because the cooldown is so long. Next, you can do Raging Blow. That's it, it doesn't matter if you have one charges or two charges, it's the same priority right there. And then you have Whirlwind or Fear Slash if you talent it into Fear Slash instead. That's it, there's just six abilities, just go down a list. Super easy, right? The other thing to add is that your Fury Slash obviously has a timer on the buff, right? So right here, if we take a look at Fury Slash, it lasts 15 seconds. Now, you don't have to worry about getting the buff at the beginning of combat. In fact, you probably don't even hit Fury Slash in the first like 10 to 15 seconds of combat because you have so many other things higher in the priority, right? But once you do have Fury Slash as the buff, you don't want to drop it, right? So what does this mean? This means, let's say you're like a minute or two into the fight and you have three stacks, right? And your buff is about to drop off. And then you definitely hit Fear Slash, even if you have to skip some steps in a priority, right? Don't have to purposely get two, three stacks right away, but you do want to not lose the stacks. And that's the change that has happened basically from the beginning of the expansion with the way people are using Fear Slash versus now. In the beginning of the expansion, it was just, you know, charge in and use Fear Slash three times, and then you just kept going, right? Now it's, wait a second, we actually don't need that much rage in the beginning of combat because we have all this overwhelming power proc, right? We got our condensed life force, we got lust sometimes. So that's why you don't have to worry about Fear Slash building right away, right off the combat. Next, let's go over your cooldown use, right? So basically, cooldowns as a fear warrior, you use it, you know, as frequently as you can, right? And the only caveat I would say now is that because of the way that your major essences work, because you're gonna take Guardian of Azeroth or Blooded Enemy, both of those line up with your recklessness perfectly, right? Blooded Enemy has a 1.5 minute cooldown, recklessness has a 1.5 minute cooldown. Guardian of Azeroth has a three minute cooldown, that just means, you know, for every two recklessness, you get to use one Guardian of Azeroth or Condensed Life Force, right? However you want to call it. So what that means is that even if you have Reckless Flurry, which can reduce the cooldown of recklessness, you don't really cast it more anymore because you want to line it up with your Mage Essences. And then on top of that, Siege Breaker is a 30 second cooldown. So every third Siege Breaker you use with recklessness, right? So like as long as you're using your cooldowns like on cooldown, you're basically good to go. Obviously with that Reckless Flurry caveat on Recklessness. So it makes it super simple. As far as our priority and then, you know, all the stuff that we said before, just place your cooldowns on top of that, right? As far as for the ordering of your cooldowns and how you want to hit them, right? So when you have Guardian of Azeroth, you actually want to hit that first. Basically, when you pre-pot on a pull, right? Because Guardian of Azeroth takes a GCD. And this is, that's the same with all the major essences, right? They all take a GCD. So let's go over the priority really quickly, right? For Guardian of Azeroth. So when you're going to pull the boss, you're gonna actually hit Garden Azeroth on a pre-pulled pot, and then Recklessness Charge, and then Siege Baker, Rampage, Bloodthirst, Dragon Roar, Rampage, Bloodthirst, right, Raging Blow. Yeah, you know, after the first, like, uh, after you hit Siege Breaker, you basically just go into your normal rotation combo, right? Now, if you don't have Rage from the Reckless Charge into Siege Breaker, uh, it's okay. You just hit a Bloodthirst instead of the Rampage, right? And then you can definitely hit Rampage after that. So basically, there's your opener with that, right? Reminder, it's Garden Azeroth, right? Recklessness, Charge. The reason why you're doing Reckless Charge together is because it actually gives you so much rage to hit them at the same time. Because Charge is off the global cooldown. And then you do a Siege Breaker. Then if you have enough rage for Rampage, you do it. If not, you hit a Bloodthirst. You hit that Rampage. And then if you have Bloodthirst ready, you hit it. If not, you hit Dragon Roar. But you just keep going down the normal rotation after that. Now, as far as for the other essences considered, right? The other one that really matters is going to be Blood and Enemy. We'll show you guys this right now as we skip the video. So my essences are off cooldown. And perfectly three minutes has passed. So let's take the Blood Enemy and put it here instead. Uh, we can do the other talent. It doesn't really matter, but we can do the minor ones. It doesn't really affect the rotation that much. Uh, so basically with Blood Enemy, it changes slightly, right? Because Blood Enemy works different, right? It doesn't just like, you don't just summon a guy that lasts so long because it only lasts 
for 10 seconds, you really want to get most of the values you can. On top of that, the rank three portion, which increases your critical hit damage by 25% for five seconds. That's only five seconds. So it's very important how you use this here, right? So, you know, the same thing as we were doing before, but instead of doing, you know, your major essence first, you're going to use it after Siege Breaker, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do Reckless Charge, right? Siege Breaker, Blood of the Emmy, right? Rampage, and then you can go into the rest of your combo, right? Uh, the only thing I will say is you can, there are some people that will use your uh, blooded enemy after the rampage, after you get enraged. I don't really think it's worth it. Because of how much hate your character might actually have, you don't really gain that much more. Like, I understand it. It's because that way you can potentially have one more GCD in your blooded enemy. But if you're not at that cutoff, it doesn't really do much. So just to make it easier, I think that just makes more sense because then your entire cooldown overlap is better, right? Because if you wait another GCD to use Blood Enemy, now it's like three GCDs behind Recklessness. So your cooldowns don't like sync up perfectly, but it still can work. Don't worry too much about it. Next, I should have talked about this during when we we're talking about stats, but of course, if crit is going to be the best stat for you, and then the crit food is going to be the best, and that's going to be the mech DAO's big mech food. Of course, the flask is just going to be whatever strength flask you have, right? So this greater flask of the undertow, right? 360. If you can use battle scar augment rune, definitely do that. It is pretty expensive to use these, but if you have the gold to do it, go ahead and do it. And then for pots, the best pot is going to be potion of embrado fury. This thing just does so much damage. It also lasts a minute. Now, obviously, if you're doing older content where things don't live for a minute, it doesn't do as well or two minutes, but it's huge. It lasts for a whole minute. So just make sure that you're staying on your target the entire time. Uh, it does crazy amount of damage. I think it's basically what that fire breath potion was supposed to do back in Legion, but that one didn't end up so well, but this one is actually really good. So single target, use this. You technically can use potion of empower proximity and AOE as long as you're AOEing for 25 seconds straight. That is actually kind of hard to just AOE for 25 seconds straight. And I don't think that many people use a potion like this in a mythic plus. Uh, maybe if you're pushing higher keys, you can try using this for AOE instead. But yeah, that's basically it for this guide. And of course, if you guys ever want a written version of my Fury Warrior guys, you guys can always check out FuryWarrior.com. And let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. And be sure to like and share this video if this video did help you. And feel free to subscribe to see more. See ya.